All right, all right. Shalom, shalom, my guy. Shalom. Today's lesson is we're just gonna, cause everybody have been asking about this, and I know everybody want you want you want ammo for this. A lot of people get asked this question. I know a lot of people get get harked on this, and this is the uh, John three sixteen breakdown. I know a lot of people been looking forward to this, but before we start, you know we gotta do it right. I want to start off by give all honor and praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Barakah Yahweh, Barakah Yahweh Shah, Barakah Yahweh, Barakah Yahweh Shah. Brother Yahweh, Brother Yahweh Shah. And also, I want to give thanks and honors to the to the elders and the prophets that have been pushing this truth to the four corners for thousands of years and still pushing this truth. And also, I want to uh, give a special thanks to the Ark and the Akwa that's always listening, learning, and supporting us. And Shalom. So, I'm going to start off with we know everybody loves to quote this verse, but nobody really loves to get the precepts or the understanding behind it of what he's really talking about in John 3.16. So, we're going to get to it. So John three sixteen, for Yahweh loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So a lot of people, when they see that word "world," they just automatically assume that He's talking about the whole entire world, and He's not talking about His individual people. And what they do is they have created a whole doctrine and a whole uh, religion just off of this one verse, John three sixteen. That's where you get uh, the Christianity doctrine from because they want to incorporate everybody when the Bible was not written for everybody. It was only written for the Hebrew Israelites. And let's get let's get a breakdown on that word world. So if you if you break down the word world and you translate it back to the Hebrew, you get cosmos. And if you understand cosmos, you get to understand the cosmos is basically a Greek word that's order or arrange, arrangement. If we understand, we're talking about the order or the arrangement of the Hebrew Israelites which is the order of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. That's that order that it's talking about. And you see, when I'm breaking down this world word, you get world, you get a lot more from it than what your simple pastors will get from you. Because they're just going to, they, they just do the surface area. They don't understand the Hebrew. Because you got to, sometimes you have to translate things back to Hebrew to get a better understanding, just like it says in Sirach 1 and 1. Because uh, they lose power when they get translated to other languages. And also, that word cosmos is uh, is, is universe, is harmonious order, just like I said, divine relationship between the gods of Elohim. And this is another concept, and this is how you and this is how you would think of it. And uh, and it's Strong's G two twenty eight nine cosmos masculine, but just like saying like you know when you have a. a you see people on the TV that talk about in the worlds of sport today or in the world of media or in the world of Hollywood, you know, when different worlds, when you know, when they say in the world of sports, they're talking about just pertaining to sports. They're not talking about the whole world. They're just talking about the sports world, everything pertaining about the sports. So we have to use just like in a, uh, in a conversation, you'd be like, well, in my world, that doesn't happen. Well, obviously you're not talking about everybody. You're talking about just in your world where things pertain to you. So in that same context, that's how the most high was using it. In John three sixteen, he was he was only pertaining to the world of the Hebrew Israelites, which we'll get we'll tap into that later with a deeper understanding. But that's where he was coming from. He was talking about uh, the world that pertains to the Hebrew Israelites, the cosmos or the arrangement of the Hebrew Israelites. And I'm gonna jump down to uh, Romans nine. I'm gonna do three through eight. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ, Yahusha my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, who pertaineth the adoption, the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of Yahweh, and the promises. Five, who are fathers, who are the concerning, as concerning the flesh of Christ, Cain, and who's all, who's over all, Yahweh bless forever, amen. So right there, three through, um, three through five is letting you know who the, who the promises, the covenant, and the adoption pertains to in the glory. Like it only says the Hebrew Israelites, which it says kinsmen of Yahweh shot by the flesh. And if somebody's a kinsman by the flesh, that means they're cousins. And if you're cousins, that means that's bloodline. So it's not an everybody thing. That's very clear. I can't I can't uh I can't be for every Hey, go ahead, throw in Romans eleven and one when you're done too. Okay, okay. Well let me finish my thought. But I can't, like, just like he's saying, I, I, but I'll jump down to six. <laughs> I'll come back to it when I catch my thought again. Not as though the word of Yahweh 
has spoken and take has <clears throat> that taken none effect, for they are not of Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, and are they are children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So the seed is called in Isaac. It was Abraham then Isaac. So again, so if you're not from Isaac, he's trying to let you know, which is the father of Jacob, which is the father of Israel, the twelve tribes. Then you can't you can't be adopted in that that verse John three sixteen cannot pertain to you because he's not talking about you. He wasn't even thinking about you when he said it. To be quite frank, that's what it means. I'm going to get uh, eight. <clears throat> that it is that which are the children of the flesh. Again, that word flesh. These are not the children of Yahweh, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And that seed, he's talking about that seed of Abraham. He's talking about that seed of Isaac. He's talking about that seed of Noah. He's talking about that seed of Moses. He's talking about that seed of Adam. He's not talking about all the other wicked nations. That's why he's so... And if you understand that word seed, it taps back into Raza, which means race. So obviously, he cannot be talking about everybody because you got to get to understand these words. A lot of people read these verses and they gloss over these words. And they have no understanding of what they really mean. So when you see that word seed, you just gloss over it. You don't even... You don't get a, you don't get an understanding of Raza, race, seed. That's what he's talking He's talking about one race of people. Period. Point blank. And I'm going to get uh, Romans. You want me to get Romans 11 and 9? 11 and, uh, do 11 and 1. 11 and 1, okay. And then uh, I go over 7 through 9 when, when I jump, when I tag in. All right. 11 and 1, I got you. Mm -hmm. I said then, have Yahweh cast away his people? That's a question mark. Yahweh forbid, for I also am an am a Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham, that seed again. <laughs> of the tribe of Benjamin, you want to get two? Yeah. Okay. Yahweh has not cast away his people, which he for which he foreknew. So that again, he's not. So when people say Yahweh has done away with the Israelites, I mean, there it is, Romans eleven one through two. And let me finish up. <clears throat> what well, yet not what the Scripture saith of Elias, how he <clears throat> how he maketh and inter intercession to Yahweh against Israel, saying, The Lord have killed thy prophets and dig down thy altars, and I have left alone. They seek my life. So he's letting you know right there. You know, he's from the seed of Abraham. Like like uh, Amos uh, 3 and 3, he says, Can two walk together unless they agree? So a lot mm -hmm. of people like to use Paul, like, Oh, Paul was talking to the Gentiles. We got to understand the word of Gentiles, too. You know, Gentiles means how basically it's like heathen, you know. So we were considered heathen like them because we were lawless, just like it says Romans 7 and 1. He says, I talk to them, you know, exactly. not brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. So that's what he's talking about. But he was sent to the, the law sheep just like he sent the disciples. Like he's like Paul, a lot of people got to understand Paul was taught by uh, the most high for 12 years. They don't understand that. Let me, you, you know? going to. You gonna jump to Acts? Yeah, I, I okay. do that. Uh, yeah, do Acts, that. get Acts of twenty one because right there, just, just read that. That'll that'll stop all that. I got you, but people gotta understand. Paul, well, learned from the Most High for twelve or so years, so they have to walk hand in hand. He's not going to be like, all right, so I'm gonna send y'all down here. All right, I'm gonna send you to this tribe, and then I'm gonna send you this tribe and make a confusion. He told you he's not the art of confusion, so people are confused. And uh, to touch more on it, just like Brother Pierce read out of nine, when he's talking about uh, which one? Six. No. Yeah. So six, when he says they are not all Israel, which are Israel, he's talking about, he's not talking, he's not pertaining this to the two thirds, he's pertaining this to the one third. And also with uh, seven, when he says they are the seed of Abraham, you got to remember, Abraham gave birth to another nation, which was the Ishmaelites, which mm -hmm. is the one, the Moors, so, you know, the Hinduism. And stuff like that. So you got people out here calling themselves Moors. Y'all were not the same. You know, the Moors, the Muslims were out here killing our people too. And then you got our people trying to join Islam. And they tell you in the book, you know, that he only loved the children of Israel. So it tells even you in the book, book, even in the Quran. Like I don't, I don't understand that. Exactly. I don't understand that. So just like he was saying, like uh, you can get Romans eleven seven through nine when it says, 
Seven, what then? Israel has not attained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. He's talking about the truth. You know, everybody's not going to get this truth and understand it and be able to see uh, and be able to break down verses like we can because it's not for everybody. It's for the one-third. It says, eight, according as it is written, Yahweh hath given them the, the spirit of slumber that they should not see and ears that they should not hear until this day. So he's telling you, even if you go out here and I can break down scripture all day long. I can break it down and teach people like they're children, which you're supposed to do when you break down stuff. I can do everything simple. I can literally walk them up, up and down scripture, but they're not going to understand it because it's not for them. You know what I'm saying? You need a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Exactly. So you, you, can't, <laughs> you can't break them down to you. Uh, Shalom, Bree. Shalom, so Brother Kareem. You can't uh, break it down to them. And just like he was saying, uh, X. 21. 21. Which one? 39 through 40. But the oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I already highlighted it. Uh, so it says, but Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Sic uh, Sicilia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. All right. Who was he talking about? 40. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the chair, I mean, on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was a maid when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, you know, and then that's when 22 goes in time. But everybody doesn't speak Hebrew, and especially at that time. Everybody didn't speak Hebrew. So if you understand uh, Zephaniah or Zech Zechariah, when he says, I will give them, you know, a pure tongue, he's talking about Paleo Hebrew. You got to remember mm -hmm. back then, everybody all spoke Paleo Hebrew because we're all basically one big family. All of us are one big family. He just chose a certain bloodline to fill them into because you got to remember Esau Edom is the seed of the serpent. So he's not a man. He's a, he's like a, of a creature. He's not, <laughs> he's not a man. <laughs> so people got to understand that he's not going to associate with them. Just like he put them out in Deuteronomy when he says Moab and Esau Edom is not allowed in the temple because Esau Edom is not a man. He is like a serpent. He's from the serpent seed. And then on top of that, I mean, he made it with Eve, but his father is, a, is from the serpent seed. You got to understand, Moabite, they're incest. So mm -hmm. he's already spoken against the law, against incest in the first place. A bastard cannot dwell in the temple of the Most exactly. High. He's never allowed in the congregation. So it's, it's just many verses uh, that you can get out of that. Uh, and then I'm going to jump to, what, John? Mm -hmm. You finished what you had to say, right? I didn't want to cut you off. No, no, no. I just wanted to get that, that part about Paul, but you got, you got it. So that's all I wanted. All right, man. So John 17, and I'm going to read 9 through 10, and it says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So what is he talking about? He said, I pray not for the world. So you read John 3, 16. It's like, wait, well, hold on. He's talking about the world. But well, he's not confusing you. That's why it's important to break down the word. Uh, a world, you know, just like the easiest way to break down the stuff. You tell people, okay, you know, you got the music world and you got the sports world. You got to let them know it's different types of world. Like people deal with it every day on a certain basis, but when it comes to scripture, they just act like they slow and they don't try to break it down. So you have to be that person to help them break it down. Like you literally have to break it down to them like it's milk. Like you mm -hmm. got to give it. You got to give them milk first and let them. What's it called? So when we explain it's like these baby things, food, like you can't you can't feed right. a like you can't feed a baby table food, straight raw table food that that they can't they can't chew it, they can't process it. You got to start them off by giving them mush, grinding it up. Then eventually you can chump it up the chunks. Then you can work your way up. That's how the word works. You got to give it to them smooth first and break it all the way down till it's smooth. Then as you grow, you can chunk it off, and then it'll be a better understanding. But as they coming into it, you got it like a baby, like he said. Nice and smooth. Yeah, you gotta you gotta break it down to them because you can't just give them all that because they're not gonna understand it. So you gotta uh, break it down to them. Just like you can take other verses when he talks about uh, in Matthew when he sent the disciples, he told them, "Hey, go only to the lost sheep of Israel." I had a Christian tell me, "Well, what about in uh, Luke or Mark when he talks about the other sheep?" Well, if he told that, you gotta understand they all got the same account. That doesn't make sense. They all got the same account. Just like I told you, Amos uh, 3 and 3, he tells you, can two walk together unless they agree? They all have the same account. So just because John wrote something in a different way than Luke, they were all there. That doesn't make sense why the disciples mm -hmm. would be on a different level. That That's just backwards. 
So they all got him. instructed at the same time. So how would they be going off? From exactly. That time, you know, if 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 Yahweh said, "Hey, we only we only mess with Israel. Go teach my people." Why would they go out to some white people? Why would they go to Esau? Why would they go to Moab? Like he didn't tell them to do that. Wouldn't, wouldn't the Most High have a problem with them doing that? Exactly. You like, you doing what I told you not to do? <laughs> exactly. So that don't, that don't even make sense. And you trust me, if you dumb enough to go against the Hamashiach, you you just got to death. When he right? tells exactly. you, when he tells exactly. you in your you face, have no like, issue, bro, <laughs> you tripping. <laughs> he telling you in your face. It ain't like you reading the Bible. He telling you himself, and you still like, no, nah, I'm good, bro. Yeah, all right. yeah. All right. not, you, yeah, you would have never got chosen to add that. So you got to understand. <laughs> these, I'm telling you, Christianity is worse than crack cocaine, man. People just, but, I don't. They not reading correctly. They'll be like, okay, well, you got this point. Well, let me prove this point. So I'm gonna give another point. We're gonna jump to uh, Isaiah 45, and then I'm gonna jump to 30. Okay. So I'm gonna start up Isaiah 45, verses 17 through 19. And it says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You should not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So he's telling you, what world is he talking about? He says Israel. All right. 18. For thus said Yahweh that created the heavens. Yahweh himself that formed the earth and made it. He had established it. He created it. Not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahweh and there is none else. <clears throat> 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not Unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me, seek ye me in vain. I, Yahweh, speak righteously. I mean, speak righteousness. I declare these things are right. So he's letting you know. <laughs> he's letting you know that he he's talking about the the children of Israel. You got to remember, Israel is a is a um, their people before it's a place. So just because you live in Israel does not mean anything. Exactly. Got to, you got people got to understand that one. Like I can. I can keep going. I can give you verses out of Psalms. You know what I'm saying? Like I can give you song, like verses out of Psalms where he talks about, uh, you know, how the portion, the portion of Jacob. Is, you know what I'm saying? So he's telling you who he's dealing with. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw those in at the end, but I'm gonna jump to uh, Isaiah 30 now, and I'm gonna 40. go, huh? 40, yeah, yeah. no, nah, 30. One, okay. Three. Okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, it says, "Woe to the rebellious children," said the Yahweh. That take counsel, but not of me, and that cover what they're covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. That walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. Now, I'm, I'm sure you're like, well, why is she reading it? What does it have to do with it? Well, easily, you got to understand, America is also uh, spiritually Egypt, Greece, Greece, all those put together. Basically, what are we trying to say is, a lot of people won't come to us to get the truth. They won't try to seek the most high to get the truth. They won't even, like, that's what I'm saying. They won't go to his prophets. They won't go to his, to the, the creator himself. They go, they're going to go to a Pharaoh. bugged out Christian. They can go to that, Pharaoh. Yeah, they're a bugged out Christian that, that's trying to teach you like, like that. Like and the, they don't know themselves. Exactly. Up like from down. You ask them questions about society, about anything, they don't know anything. They don't understand what's going on. Most of these people that's preaching this word in this church, they don't even understand that we lived in the last days. They still trying to tell you to get your bag and stuff. Exactly. And you know what I'm like, saying? Oh. That's how you know they all, bro. They, they all, bro. They're like, oh, well, we got 50 years. We ain't got none of that, bro. These folks ain't in touch with the most high at all. That's how you know. Folks talking like this, they don't feel the income. You know they're not, you know they're not in touch with the most high. You know they're going off. They don't have no business being up there touching that Bible preaching. Period. Man, I need to I need to find it when he talks about uh Oh, right here. All right. I, I got you. So I'm gonna go to fourteen. Um so I'm gonna read thirteen, just like we was talking about. Exactly. Uh, it says, exactly. Then said I, ah, Lord Yahweh, behold the prophet said unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Fourteen, then Yahweh said unto me, the prophets prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesied to you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and it's the seat of their heart. Uh, therefore, thus saith Yahweh concerning the prophets that prophesied in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesied shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. Well, in America right now, because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. So that was uh, Jeremiah 14, 
Uh, you can really read 10 through 16, but I started from 13 through 16. So he's letting you know, um, like, you got all these, you know, these false prophets in these so-called church. We're going to pray for this. I've seen people, you know, these bugged out Christians that I used to go to school with. They praying for the campus. Oh, I prayed this and this with that J word thrown in there. He definitely going to listen to you now after you threw that J word in there. And they're just like, oh, you know, uh, you know, I'm praying for this this campus to be better. Why? He told you in the second Esdras that these 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 uh prophecies are not going to be slack. This family is not going to be slack. Another thing he's saying is going to be slack. Is they are going to speed up more than likely, or you know he can put he can push it back. But you got to understand, you got to stop listening to these false prophets because they can't teach you, especially if they're not a part of the children of Israel. They they can't. Exactly. Teach, they've been teaching us from the Gentile way for the longest, and it's not going to work. But I'm gonna pass it to Brethren Paris so he can continue. And uh, just like uh, just like we said before, he only reveals his uh, the saints. Those are the Hebrew Israelites. Those are the people that he talked about earlier that the adoption, the covenant, and the promise belong to. Those are the people who are supposed to be preaching the word. That's why he gave them the covenant, and the promises, so they would preach it to their people. But I'm gonna uh, jump to Second Ezra six and fifty six. And then a lot of people, you know, like they'll they'll use that where they'll be like, well, you know, you know, all of us come from Adam, you know. Brother Darren already broke it down. Not everybody <laughs> come from Adam, but we're we gonna get it more because I mean, they try to say this like everybody come from Adam, so I mean, he has to love everybody. Well, no, he are he he has something for that too, because he already know what people gonna say and how they gonna act. So let me let me bring it out. Second Ezra is six and fifty six, my favorite verses. As for the people which also come up at them, thou hast said they are nothing, but like unto spittle. Has that likened the abundance of them unto a drop that has fallen from a vessel? So basically, so basically right there, he's just letting you know. And I'm a, and I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read a 54. I'm gonna read 54 through 59, but he's just letting you know that he's comparing every nation to spit. And if you care, if you compare something to spit or you spit on somebody that uh you thinking of them as nothing. You don't think of them as nothing. Point blank period. And I mean a lot of people and this and this is coming out of the apocrypha and I understand we're gonna do a lesson on that too. The reason why they removed the apocrypha. But this is a huge reason why they removed the apocrypha because you can pull verses like this and there's nothing to say. Because the most high compares you to spit what, what you gonna say. You can't say nothing. It's what you yeah, work in his eyes. Try to like make it broad. Mm -hmm. It's not for it's not for everybody. You can't make it broad, just like they do with our culture. Culture vultures, man, it's been the same. Exactly. So I'm a, I'm a, uh, but I'm gonna read Second Ezra is fifty four through fifty nine, so you get context for it. Oh yeah, and then after that, uh, do chapter seven verses ten and eleven. All right. And after these, Adam also whom thou madest made the Lord of all creatures of him. Come we all, the people, and also whom that he's chosen. And also have I spoken before, O Yahweh, because thou hast made is the world for our sakes. Who is that our? We're going to find out who was ours. He made the world for our sake. So that's possessive. Go look it up. Ours is a possessive now. We're going to find out who's our, who possesses this. Because this is how you got to read the Bible. You got to read the Bible in context. Just like a storybook. It's like our, who was our? So let's find out who's our is. 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said they are nothing. So he's not talking about the other people that come from Adam. So who is the one people that come out he's talking about? The Israelites. Hey, right, yeah, because just, just, uh, just for a quick breakdown, all right? So you got Adam, right? And then, like I told you, Esau Edom comes from the serpent seed. All mm -hmm. the other nations are in the middle. They sway to what we do, but we're all one family except Esau Edom. Esau Edom is, you know, that's the bastard of the group. All right, that, he's from a different what's it called? Just because he came through Isaac, you gotta understand the Most High is, is of balance. So, like we did a lesson before, uh, Esau, Esau and Jacob is nothing but Cain and Abel reincarnated. Exactly. So that's that's where people are like, well, whoa, whoa, he comes from Isaac. Well, that's just. The reincarnation, and he told you just like uh, Genesis three and fifteen, he's going to put enmity between them. So there is going to be somebody. It's going to be a serpent seed in the middle of it. See what I'm saying? Because you got to have a balance of good and evil. 
So that's right. where that balance comes from, and that's how you connect mm-hmm. the West Coast. But when he talks about the seed of man, he's talking about Adam. And then, you know, when, when you read the bloodline of Adam in Genesis, that's what, that's what he's mainly paying attention to. Then when you get to Abraham, Abraham created, you know, more nations. But then that's why, it goes, that's why he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to tell you exactly what bloodline he messes with. So, hey, fill in the blanks after that. Exactly. It's, it's pretty. And he, 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 he leads you to it. It's very obvious. That's why we always we harp heavy on the bloodlines and for you to understand how it goes. Because once you understand the bloodlines, can't nobody throw you off. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody throw you off of the off of the truth? Because somebody can come in here and throw you any type of verse, but I mean, you get your precepts right, you gonna cut them up because they they they, they don't have an understanding like that. But let me finish up. Uh, Fifty seven, and now you how behold these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing. Again, he's saying they're nothing have become <clears throat> to the Lord's over us and devour us. But we thy, we, we thy people, whom has called thy, thy firstborn and only begotten, and thy fervent lover, and given us into their hand. So when he's talking about, and that fervent lover, we'll talk about that later, is the Most High compares Israel to a fine maiden, a fine bride that he's, he's grooming. So that's what, that's what they're talking about when they're talking about the only begotten, that fervent love. He's talking about the only begotten. He's talking about the only begotten son, which he's talking about Adam, which is Yahweh. We, we already broke that down. We'll get that again. We'll do another breakdown of that later. And 59, if the world now be made for our sakes, we do not possess and inherit with the world. How long shall, shall we endure? So again, the most high created the world for the intent of the Hebrew Israelites. Very clear and point blank. And a lot of people, a lot of people, this, this, like I said, a lot of people don't have this verse or they don't get this understanding because what Esau Edom has done is he has pulled the Parker foot and verses like this out of the Bible. And sometimes he'll just change them all together. And that's why we keep bringing these verses out. That's why we harp on the King James Version. Because when you get the King James Version, 1611, can't nobody rock you. Can't nobody rock your faith because it's solid. But let me jump. Uh, what you you want me to read? Second Ezra seven, uh, ten and eleven. Yeah. So people can understand. All right. Let me get to it. Second Ezra seven, ten, eleven. Mm-hmm. All right, ten. And I said, "It is so, Yahweh." Then he said unto me, "Even so, also is the Israelites' portion, because for their sakes I made the world." And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was a decree that now is done. So again, I mean, that, and that's straight out his mouth. He's saying, I made the world for their sake. He didn't make the world for Esau. He didn't make the world for Moab. He didn't make the world for Ammon. He didn't make the world for all these other nations. He made the world for us. Exactly. We just wanted to live uh, love. Exactly. And then you get that straight and narrow path from... Uh, Read 12 and 13 real quick. All right. Then where the interests of the world may narrow, full of sorrow and travail, there are there are but few and evil, full of pearls and and very painfully. For the interests of the elder world were made wide and sure and brought Im- Im- immortal fruit. So he letting it, he's letting you know when he created the Israelites, you got to understand, Adam was created to teach the word. You got to understand, it was all the creatures here. You know what I'm saying? Like the Nephilim and things like that. So listen, the battle is basically between the Nephilim and the Seraphim. So the Nephilim are the, the just because you're a fallen angel doesn't mean you're wicked. You see what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. the Seraphim, uh, David is a Seraphim, which I'm going to give you some stuff that a lot of people don't understand. David is a Seraphim. Right? So what do seraphims do? Well, seraphims write psalms all day. They write the words of the Most High, you know, because they're constantly in, in front of his face. If you understand the book of Enoch, they're constantly in his face, and they're always praising him. That's why he says everything else is vanity. That's why he's letting you know we were created to follow the law, statutes, and holy days. That's why he says on earth as it is in heaven. David is a seraphim. David is also Archangel Gabriel. All right? So David is the seraphim. You know, the, the, the kingdom, the Israelites are seraphims, right? Mainly most of them come out of the house of David, all right? So the Nephilim are the wicked. You know, those are the ones, the serpent seed. Those are the ones that are trying to destroy the Israelites. So that's when you have uh, 
evil and good. So, but at first, there was no wickedness in man. At first, until they 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 got a, a hold, uh, they got in contact with the seraphim. Then that's why he made it so straight and narrow. Because unless you are, uh, you know, you do the best that you can to uphold the law, statutes, and the holidays, you're gonna walk the straight and narrow path. That's why. That's why he says, um, woo. I get the verse at the end when he tells you uh, about the next world. Oh, actually, it's on the next page. It's on chapter 8. Mm -hmm. All right, so chapter 8, uh, verse 1, he said, And he answered me, saying, The Most High has made this world for many, but the world to come for few. So he didn't make it for everybody. Uh, you're welcome to share, brother. Hey, share the gospel. But to not get off topic, that's what he's talking about. So to tack on to what he was saying about Second Edris, 6 and 56, uh... You done, right? I don't want to cut you off. Uh, I'm done with it. I'm going to do Amos, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right, so to jump in real quick, to tack on to that is you can you can get them Isaiah 40, 13 through 18, right? But the point is in 17, 13, it says, Who have, who have directed the spirit of Yahweh or being his counselor have taught him? With whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed to him the way of understanding? He's letting you know, hey, Nope, there's nobody above the most high. Nobody gave him counsel. Nobody told him. He is um, omnipotent. Mm -hmm. All right? He's perpetual. He's he's the uh, beginning and the end. All right? So, uh, 15, behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he takes up the owls as a very little thing. So, he's letting you know, hey, compared to us, we, they're nothing but dust. See what I'm saying? A drop of a bucket. They're, they're dust. They, they count for nothing. 16, and Lebanon is none, uh, not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. 17, all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. They are nothing. That's what he's letting you know. Even the children of Israel. So when people walk around with so much pride and stuff like that, that's why when they got in trouble, they put dust upon their head because that's what they are. They're dust. You have, they have to remind themselves, hey, we ain't, you know, we didn't uh we didn't create this world. We we was created to do this and we think we all this and that. Hey, we gotta we gotta humble ourselves. You gotta that's why they always put dust and put on sackcloth because they gotta understand they're like dust. They were brought up from dust and they're gonna return return to dust. That's why they had to be humble. That's where the word uh humble comes from, humility. So that's what he's talking about. Uh but go ahead and continue, man. I just wanna throw that part in. No, nah, you good, bro. They needed that. They needed that. But just like brother Darren, just like brother Darren was talk, talking about, and that's just uh, piggybacking off of Second uh, Ezra six, fifty six. But just like he's saying, he's saying the mo the other nations are compared to nothing, because that's not that's not the importance of that's not the importance of the story. The importance of the story is about the Most High and His people. That's that's really the basis of the Bible, and a lot of people don't even understand that concept. But uh, I'm gonna jump to Amos three one through two. And hear this word, hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Yisraelah, against the whole family which I have brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known all your families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. So again, a lot of people, a lot of people might not understand this, or a lot of people they might have a confusion. Because I, I run into a lot of brothers, they'll be like, Well, they'll say this, they'll be like, Well, if the most if the most high loved this. Why is he letting us go through all this? Well, it's just like your parents. You know, your parents love you, but sometimes they let you get burnt. Sometimes they let you get hurt because that's the only way you're going to learn. And yeah. that's what the Most High is doing. Like, that's, he he's uh, he seen it. Mm -hmm. He chastised us. And you got to understand, like, he already did it the nice way. He already tried to be like, hey, don't do that. He already he already came to you. So now he got to ratchet it up. You got to keep ratcheting it up, ratchet it up until everybody gets shot, you know. When, when you don't listen to your parents say something and it finally gets to the point they pop you real quick, then that's when you, you know, that's when you finally understand. That's that same thing that he's doing. That's why he said, I will punish you only for your sins because he's only looking at us. That's why we're in the predicament because we fell off. So a lot of people, we out here pointing the blame at Esau, Edom, and all these other nations. No, nah, it ain't about that. It's about us. And a lot of people get that confused. They out here got this hate for all these other nations. No, most high got the hate for everybody. He got enough hate for everybody. So leave that alone. We need to be worried about what we got to do. That's that's the importance. He gonna get them, man. Don't worry about what they got coming, cause they got some shit coming that you ain't got it. You ain't got to worry about. Believe me, the Most High got it. Trust. Me. 
So I'm jump to John four and twenty two. Ye worship me, you know not. <clears throat> we know what we worship for salvation of the Jew. So basically, in that, and and I tie this to a lot of things. You know, you just like Brother Darren said, you'll have people fall out and they'll pray on the knees. They'll pray about the school and hope that the coronavirus gets better to help because uh, they lose power when they get translated to other languages. And also, that word cosmos is uh, is, is universe, is harmonious order, just like I said, divine relationship between the gods of Elohim. And this is another concept, and this is how you and this is how you would think of it. And uh, and it's Strong's G two twenty eight nine cosmos masculine, but just like saying like you know when you have a uh, you see people on the TV that talk about in the worlds of sport today or in the world of media or in the world of Hollywood, you know when different worlds when you know when they say in the world of sports they're talking about just pertaining to sports. They're not talking about the whole world. They're just talking about the sports world. Everything pertaining about the sports. So we have to use, just like in a uh, in a conversation, you'd be like, well, in my world, that doesn't happen. Well, obviously, you're not talking about everybody. You're talking about just in your world where things pertain to you. So in that same context, that's how the Most High was using it in John 3.16. He was he was only pertaining to the world of the Hebrew Israelites, which we'll, get, we'll tap into that later with a deeper understanding. But that's where he was coming from. He was talking about... Uh, the world that pertains to the Hebrew Israelites, the cosmos or the arrangement of the Hebrew Israelites. And I'm going to jump down to uh, Romans 9. I'm going to do 3 through 8. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ, Yahweh, my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, who pertaineth the adoption, the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of Yahweh, and the promises. Five, who are fathers who are the concerning as concerning the flesh of Christ, Cain, and who's all who's over all, Yahweh blessed forever, Amen. So right there, three through um, three through five is letting you know who the who the promises, the covenant, and the adoption pertain to in the glory. Like it only says the Hebrew Israelites, which it says kinsmen of Yahweh shot by the flesh, and if somebody's a kinsman by the flesh, that means they're cousins. And if you're cousins, that means that's bloodline. So it's not an everybody thing. That's very clear. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't be for every. Hey, go ahead, throw in Romans eleven and one when you're done too. Okay, okay. Well, let me finish my thought. But I can't like just like you saying. I, I, but I jump down to six. <laughs> I'll come back to it when I catch my thought again. Not as though the word of Yahweh has spoken and take. Has, has taken none effect for they are not of Israel which are of Israel neither because they are the seed of Abraham and are they are children but in Isaac shall thy seed be called so the seed is called in Isaac it was Abraham then Isaac so again so if you're not from Isaac he's trying to let you know which is the father of Jacob which is the father of Israel the 12 tribes then you can't you can't be adopted in that that verse John three sixteen cannot pertain to you because he's not talking about you. He wasn't even thinking about you when he said it. To be quite frank, that's what it means. I'm gonna get uh, eight. <clears throat> that it is that which are the children of the flesh. Again, that word flesh. These are not the children of Yahweh, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And that seed, he's talking about that seed of Abraham. He's talking about that seed of Isaac. He's talking about that seed of Noah. He's talking about that seed of Moses. He's talking about that seed of Adam. He's not talking about all the other wicked nations. That's why he's so... And if you understand that word seed, it taps back into Raza, which means race. So obviously, he cannot be talking about everybody because you got to get to understand these words. A lot of people read these verses and they gloss over these words. And they have no understanding of what they really mean. So when you see that word seed, you just gloss over. You don't even you don't get a you don't get an understanding of Raza race seed. That's what he's talking. He's talking about one race of people. Period. Point blank. And I'm gonna get uh, Romans. You want me to get Romans eleven and nine? Eleven and uh, do eleven and one. Eleven and one. Okay. And then uh, I go over seven through nine when, when I jump when I tag in. All right. Eleven and one. I got you. Mm -hmm. I said then, have Yahweh cast away his people? 
It's a question mark. Yahweh forbid. For I also am a, am a Israelite of the seed of Abraham. That seed again. <laughs> of the tribe of Benjamin. You want to get two? Yeah. Okay. Yahweh has not cast away his people, which he for which he foreknew. So that again, he's not. So when people say Yahweh has done away with the Israelites, I mean, there it is, Romans 11, 1 through 2. And let me finish up. <clears throat> what well, yet not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he <clears throat> how he maketh an inter intercession to Yahweh against Israel, saying, The Lord have killed thy prophets and dig down thy altars, and I have left alone. They seek my life. So he's letting you know right there. You know, he's from the seed of Abraham. Like like uh Amos uh three and three, he says, Can two walk together unless they agree? So a lot mm -hmm. of people like use Paul, like, oh, Paul was talking to the Gentiles. We gotta understand the word of Gentiles too. You know, Gentiles means how basically it's like heathen, you know. So we were considered heathen like them because we were lawless, just like it says Romans seven and one. He says, I talk to them, you know, exactly. not brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. So that's what he's talking about. But he was sent to the, the lost sheep just like he sent the disciples. Like he's like Paul. A lot of people gotta understand. Paul was taught by uh, the Most High for twelve years. They don't understand that. Let me. You, you know? gonna you gonna jump to Acts? Yeah, I, okay. I do that. Uh, yeah, do Acts, that. get Acts of twenty one because right there, just just read that 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 stop all that. I got you, but people gotta understand. Paul well learned from the Most High for twelve or so years. So. They have to walk hand in hand. He's not going to be like, all right, so I'm going to send y'all down here. All right, I'm going to send you to this tribe, and then I'm going to send you this tribe and make a confusion. He told you he's not the art of confusion. So people are confused. And uh, to touch more on it, just like Brother Pierce read out of nine, when he's talking about, uh, which one? Six. No. Yeah, so six when he says they are not all Israel, which are Israel. He's talking about. He's not talking, he's not pertaining this to the two thirds, he's pertaining this to the one third. And also with uh seven, when he says they are the seed of Abraham, you gotta remember Abraham gave birth to another nation, which was the Ishmaelites, which mm -hmm. is the one the Moors, so you know, the Hinduism and stuff like that. So you got people out here calling themselves Moors. Y'all were not the same. You know, the Moors, the Muslims were out here killing our people too. And then you got our people trying to join Islam, and they tell you in the book, you know, that he only loved the children of Israel, so it tells even you in the book, book, even in the Quran. Like I don't, I don't understand that. Exactly. I don't understand that. So just like he was saying, like uh, you can get Romans eleven seven through nine when it says seven. What then? Israel has not attained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. He's talking about the truth. You know, everybody's not gonna get this truth and understand it and be able to see, uh, and be able to break down verses like we can because it's not for everybody. It's for the one third. And says eight, according as it is written, Yahweh hath given them the, the spirit of slumber that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. So he's telling you, even if you go out here and I can break down scripture all day long, I can break it down and teach people like their children, which you're supposed to do when you break down stuff. I can do everything simple. I can literally show, walk them up, up and down scripture, but they're not going to understand it because it's not for them. You know, what I'm saying? lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Exactly. So you, you, can't, <laughs> you can't break them down to you. Uh, Shalom, Bri. Shalom, so you Brother Kareem. You can't uh, break it down to them. And just like he was saying, uh, Acts 21. 21. Which one? 39 through 40. But the oh, yeah. 40. oh, yeah. I already highlighted. Uh, so it says, but Paul said, I am a man, which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Sic uh, Sicilia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. All right. Who was he talking about? 40. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the chair, I mean, on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was a made, when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, you know, and then that's when 22 goes in time. But everybody doesn't speak Hebrew, especially at that time, everybody didn't speak Hebrew. So if you understand uh, Zephaniah or Zech Zechariah, when he says, I will give them, you know, a pure tongue, he's talking about Paleo Hebrew. You gotta remember mm -hmm. back then, Everybody all spoke Paleo Hebrew because we're all basically one big family. All of us are one big family. He just chose a certain bloodline to fill them into because you got to remember Esau Edom is the seed of the serpent. So he's not a man. He's a he's like a, of a creature. He's not. 
He's not a man. So people got to understand that he's not going to associate with them just like he put them out in Deuteronomy when he says Moab and Esau Edom is not allowed in the temple because Esau Edom is not a man. He is like a serpent. He's from the serpent seed. And then on top of that, I mean, he made it with Eve, but his father is, a, is from the serpent seed. You got to understand, Moabite, they're incest. So mm -hmm. he's already spoken against the law against incest in the first place. A bastard cannot dwell in the temple of the Most exactly. High. He's never allowed in the congregation. So it's, it's just many verses uh, that you can get out of that. Uh, and then I'm going to jump to, what, John? Mm -hmm. You finished what you had to say, right? I didn't want to cut you off. No, no, no. I just wanted to get that, that part about Paul, but you got it. You got it. So that's all I wanted. All right, man. So John 17, and I'm going to read 9 through 10, and that says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So what is he talking about? He said, I pray not for the world. So you read John 3, 16. It's like, wait, well, hold on. He's talking about the world. Well, he's not confusing you. That's why it's important to break down the word. Uh, a world, you know, just like the easy way to break down the stuff. You tell people, okay, you know, you got the music world and you got the sports world. You got to let them know it's different types of world. Like people deal with it every day on a certain basis, but when it comes to scripture, they just act like they slow and they don't try to break it down. So you have to be that person to help them break it down. Like you literally have to break it down to them like it's milk. Like you mm -hmm. got to give it, you got to give them milk first and let them. What's it called? So when we explain like it, like baby food, like you can't you can't feed a right. like you can't feed a baby table food, straight raw table food that that they can't they can't chew it, they can't process it. You got to start them off by giving them mush, grinding it up. Then eventually you can chunk it up to chunks. Then you can work your way up. That's how the word works. You got to give it to them smooth first and break it all the way down till it's smooth. Then as you grow, you can chunk it off, and then it'll be a better understanding. But as they coming into it, you got it like a baby, like he said. Nice and smooth. Yeah, you gotta you gotta break it down to them because you can't just give them all that because they're not gonna understand it. So you gotta uh, break it down to them. Just like you can take other verses when he talks about uh, in Matthew when he sent the disciples, he told them, "Hey, go only to the lost sheep of Israel." I had a Christian tell me, "Well, what about in uh, Luke or Mark when he talks about the other sheep?" Well, if he told that, you gotta understand they all got the same account. That doesn't make sense. They all got the same account. Just like I told you, Amos uh, 3 and 3, it tells you, can two walk together unless they agree? They all have the same account. So just because John wrote something in a different way than Luke, they were all there. That doesn't make sense why the disciples mm -hmm. would be on a different level. That That's just backwards. So They all got them. instructed at the same time. So how would they be going off? Exactly. That time, you know? If 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 Yahweh said, "Hey, we only we only mess with Israel. Go teach my people." Why would they go out to some white people? Why would they go to Esau? Why would they go to Moab? Like he didn't tell them to do that. When when the Most High have a problem with them doing that? Exactly. He's like, Are you doing what I told you not to do? <laughs> exactly. So that that don't even make sense. And you trust me, if you're dumb enough to go against the Hamashiach, you you just got to death. When he tells you, when he tells exactly. you in your you head, have no like, issue, bro, you <laughs> tripping. <laughs> he telling you in your face. It ain't like you reading the Bible. He telling you himself. And you still like, no, nah, I'm good, bro. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. He not, you, yeah you would have never got chosen to add that. So you got to understand, <laughs> I'm telling you, Christianity is worse than crack cocaine, man. People just, but, I don't, they not reading correctly. They'll be like, okay, well, you got this point. Well, let me prove this point. So I'm going to give another point. We're going to jump to uh, Isaiah 45, and then I'm going to jump to 30. Okay. So I'm going to start up Isaiah 45, verses 17 through 19. And it says, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You should not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So he's telling you, what world is he talking about? He says Israel. All right. 18. For thus said Yahweh that created the heavens. Yahweh himself that formed the earth and made it. He had established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahweh and there is none else. <clears throat> 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me, seek ye me in vain. I, Yahweh, speak righteously. I mean, speak righteousness. I declare these things are right. So he's letting you know. <laughs> he's letting you know that he he's talking about the the children of Israel. You got to remember, Israel is a is a um, their people before it's a place. So just because you live in Israel does not mean anything. Exactly. Got to, you got people got to understand that one. Like I can. I can keep going. I can give you verses out of Psalms. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I can give you song like verses out of songs where he talks about uh you know how the portion the portion of Jacob. You, you know what I'm saying? So he's telling you who he's dealing with. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw those in at the end. But I'm gonna jump to uh Isaiah 30 now. And I'm gonna 40. go Huh? 40? Yeah. yeah. No. Nah, 30. One, okay. Two, three. Yeah, okay, okay. So, uh, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, said Yahweh, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover what they're covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. That walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. Now, I'm, I'm sure you're like, Well, why is she reading it? What does that have to do with it? Well, easily, you got to understand, America is also uh, spiritually Egypt, Greece. Greece, all those put together. Basically, what are we trying to say is a lot of people won't come to us to get the truth. They won't try to seek the most high to get the truth. They won't even, like, that's what I'm saying. They won't go to his prophets. They won't go to his, to the, the creator himself. They go, they're going to go to a Pharaoh. bugged out Christian. They can go to that, Pharaoh. Yeah, they're a bugged out Christian <laughs> that, that's trying to teach you like, like that. Like and the they don't know themselves. Exactly. Up like down. Saying. You ask them questions about society, about anything, they don't know anything. They don't understand what's going on. Most of these people that's preaching this word in this church, they don't even understand that we live in the last days. They still trying to tell you to get your bag and stuff. Exactly. And you know what I'm like, saying? Oh. That's how you know they all, bro. They, they all, bro. They're like, oh, well, we got 50 years. We ain't got none of that, bro. These folks ain't in touch with the most high at all. That's how you know. Folks talking like this, they don't feel the income. You know they're not, you know they're not in touch with the most high. You know they're going off. They don't have no business being up there touching that Bible preaching. Period. Man, I need to I need to find it when he talks about uh Oh, right here. All right. I, I got you. So I'm gonna go to fourteen. Um so I'm gonna read thirteen, just like we was talking about. Exactly. Uh, it says exactly. then said I, ah, Lord Yahweh, behold the prophet said unto them, You shall not see the sword, neither shall you have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Fourteen, then Yahweh said unto me, the prophets prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesied to you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and it's the seat of their heart. Uh, therefore, thus saith Yahweh concerning the prophets that prophesied in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesied shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem. Well, in America right now, because of the famine and the sword, and they shall have none to bury their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. So that was uh, Jeremiah 14. Uh, you can really read 10 through 16, but I started from 13 through 16. So he's letting you know, um, like, you got all these, you know, these false prophets in these so-called church. We're going to pray for this. I've seen people, you know, these bugged out Christians that I used to go to school with, they praying for the campus. Oh, I prayed this and this with that J word thrown in there. He definitely gonna listen to you now after he threw that J word in there. And they just like, oh, you know, uh, you know, I'm praying for this this campus to be better. Why? He told you in the second Esdras that these 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 uh prophecies are not gonna be slack. This family is not gonna be slack. Another thing he's saying is gonna be slack. Is they are gonna speed up more than likely, or you know, he can put he can push it back. But you gotta understand, you gotta stop listening to these false prophets because they can't teach you, especially if they're not a part of the children of Israel. They, they can't exactly. teach, they've they been teaching us from the Gentile way for the longest, and it's not going to work. But I'm going to pass it to Brethren Perry so he can continue. And uh, just, like, uh, just like we said before, he only reveals his, uh, the saints. Those are the Hebrew Israelites. Those are the people that he talked about earlier that the adoption, the covenant, and the promise belong to. Those are the people who are supposed to be preaching the word. That's why he gave them the covenant, the promises, so they would preach it to their people. But I'm going to uh, jump to Second Ezra 6 and 56. And then a lot of people, you know, like, they'll, they'll use that word. They'll be like, well, you know, you know, all of us come from Adam. You know, Brother Darren already broke it down. Not everybody <laughs> come from Adam. But we're going to get it some more because, I mean, they try to say this like everybody come from Adam, so I mean he has to love everybody. Well, no, he are he he has something for that too, because he already know what people gonna say and how they gonna act. So let me let me bring it out. Second Ezra six and fifty six, one of my favorite verses. As for the people which also come of Adam, thou hast said they are nothing, 
but like unto spittle, has that likened abundance of them unto a drop that has fallen from a vessel. So basically, so basically, right there, he's just letting you know. And I'm a, and I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read a 54. I'm gonna read 54 through 59. But he's just letting you know that he's comparing every nation to spit. And if you care, if you compare something to spit, or you spit on somebody that uh, you thinking of them as nothing, you don't think of them as nothing. Point blank, period. And I mean, a lot of people, and this, and this is coming out of the apocrypha. And I understand we're gonna do a lesson on that too. The reasons why they removed the apocrypha, but this is a huge reason why they removed the apocrypha because you can pull verses like this, and there's nothing to say because the Most High compares you to spit. With, what you gonna say? You can't say nothing. It's what you work. Yeah, they, try to, they try to like make it broad. Mm -hmm. It's not for it's not for everybody. You can't make it broad. Just like they do with our culture, culture vultures, man. It's been the same. Exactly. So I'm a, I'm a. Uh, but I'm gonna read Second Ezra is fifty four through fifty nine so you get context for it. Oh yeah, and then after that, uh do chapter seven, verses ten and eleven. All right. And after these, Adam also whom thou madest made the Lord of all creatures of him, come we all, the people, and also whom that he's chosen. And also have I spoken before, O Yahweh, because thou hast made is the world for our sakes. Who was that hour? We're going to find out who was ours. He made the world for our sake. So that's possessive. Go look it up. Ours is a possessive now. We're going to find out who's our, who possesses this. Because this is how you got to read the Bible. You got to read the Bible in context. Just like a storybook. It's like our, who was our? So let's find out who's our is. 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said they are nothing. So he's not talking about the other people that come from Adam. So who is the one people that come out? He's talking about the Israelites. Hey, right, yeah, just just uh, just for a quick breakdown. All right, so you got Adam, right? And then, like I told you, Esau Edom comes from the serpent seed. All mm -hmm. the other nations are in the middle. They sway to what we do, but we're all one family except Esau Edom. Esau Edom is, you know, that's the bastard of the group. All right, that, he's from a different what's it called? Just because he came. Through Isaac, you got to understand the most high is, is of balance. So, like we did a lesson before, uh, Esau, Esau and Jacob is nothing but Cain and Abel reincarnated. Exactly. So, that's that's where people are like, whoa, whoa, he comes from Isaac. Well, that's just the reincarnation. And he told you, just like uh, Genesis 3 and 15, he's going to put enmity between them. So, that it's going to be somebody, it's going to be a servancy in the middle of it. See what I'm saying? Because you got to have a balance of good and evil. So that's exactly. where that balance comes from, and that's how you connect mm -hmm. to what's called. But when he talks about the seed of man, he's talking about Adam. And then, you know, when, when you read the bloodline of Adam in Genesis, that's what that's what he's mainly paying attention to. Then when you get to Abraham, Abraham created, you know, more nations. But then that's why, it goes, that's why he says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to tell you exactly what bloodline he messes with. So, hey, fill in the blanks after that. Exactly. It's, it's pretty, and he, 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 he leads you to it. It's very obvious. That's why we always, we harp heavy on the bloodlines and for you to understand how it goes, because once you understand the bloodlines, can't nobody throw you off. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody throw you off of the, off of the truth. Because somebody can come in here and throw you any type of verse, but I mean, you get your precepts right, you're going to cut them up. Because they, 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 they don't have an understanding like that. But let me finish up uh, 57. And now you how behold these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing. Again, he's saying they're nothing. Have become <clears throat> to the Lord's over us and devour us. But we thy, we, we thy people, whom has called thy, thy firstborn and only begotten, and thy fervent lover, and given us into their hand. So when he's talking about, and that fervent lover, we'll talk about that later, is the Most High compares Israel to a fine maiden, a fine bride that he's, he's grooming. So that's what that's what they're talking about when they're talking about the only begotten, that fervor love. He's talking about the only begotten. He's talking about the only begotten son, which he's talking about Adam, which is Yahweh. We we already broke that down. We'll get that again. We'll do another breakdown that later. And fifty nine, if the world now be made for our sakes, we do not possess and inherit with the world. How long shall shall we endure? So again, the Most High created the world for the intent of the Hebrew Israelites. Very clear and point blank. 
And a lot of people, a lot of people, this, this like I said, a lot of people don't have this verse or they don't get this understanding because what Esau Edom has done is he has pulled the apocrypha and verses like this out of the Bible. And sometimes he'll just change them all together. And that's why we keep bringing these verses out. That's why we harp on the King James Version. Because when you get the King James Version, 1611, can't nobody rock you. Can't nobody rock your faith because it's solid. But let me jump. Uh, what you, you want me to read Second Ezra 7? Uh, 10 and 11, yeah. So people can understand. All right. Let me get to it. Second Ezra 7, 10 and 11. Mm -hmm. All right, 10. And I said, it is so, Yahweh. Then he said unto me, even so also is the Israelites' portion. Because for their sakes, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was a decree that now is done. So again, I mean, that, and that's straight out his mouth. He's saying, I made the world for their sake. He didn't make the world for Esau. He didn't make the world for Moab. He didn't make the world for Ammon. He didn't make the world for all these other nations. He made the world for us. Exactly. We is one and true that uh, love. Exactly. And then you get that straight and narrow path from uh, read 12 to 13 real quick. All right. Then where the interests of the world may narrow, full of sorrow and travail, there are there are but few and evil, full of pearls and and very painfully. For the interests of the elder world were made wide and sure and brought Im Im immortal fruit. So he letting it, he's letting you know when he created the Israelites, you gotta understand, Adam was created to teach the word. You gotta understand it was all the creatures here, you know what I'm saying, like the Nephilim and things like that. So listen, the battle is basically between the Nephilim and the Seraphim. So the Nephilim are the, the just because you're a fallen angel doesn't mean you're wicked. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. the Seraphim, uh, David is a Seraphim, which I'm going to give you some stuff that a lot of people don't understand. David is a Seraphim, right? So what do Seraphims do? Well, Seraphims write psalms all day. They write the words of the Most High, you know, because they're constantly in, in front of his face. If you understand the book of Enoch, they're constantly in his face and they're always praising him. That's why he says everything else is vanity. That's why he's letting you know we were created to follow the law, statutes, and the whole days. That's why he says on earth as it is in heaven. David is a seraphim. David is also Archangel Gabriel. All right? So David is the seraphim. You know, the, the, the kingdom, the Israelites are seraphims, right? Mainly, most of them come out of the house of David. All right? So the Nephilim are the wicked. You know, those are the ones, the serpent seed. Those are the ones that are trying to destroy the Israelites. So that's when you have uh, evil and good. So, but at first, there was no wickedness in man. At first, until they 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 got a, a hold, uh, they got in contact with the seraphim. Then that's why he made it so straight and narrow. Because unless you are, uh, you know, you do the best that you can to uphold the law, statutes, and the holidays, mm -hmm. you're gonna walk the straight and narrow path. That's why. That's why he says, um, "Woo." I get the verse at the end when he tells you uh, about the next world. Oh, actually, it's on the next page. It's on chapter 8. Mm -hmm. All right, so chapter 8, uh, verse 1, he said, and he answered me saying, the Most High has made this world for many, but the world to come for few. So he didn't make it for everybody. Uh, you're welcome to share, bro. Hey, share the gospel. But to not get off topic, that's what he's talking about. So to tack on to what he was saying about Second Ezra 6 and 56, uh, you done, right? I don't want to cut you off. Uh, I'm done with it. I'm going to do Amos, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right, so to jump in real quick, to tack on to that is you can you can get them Isaiah 40, 13 through 18, right? But the point is in 17. 13, it says, Who have, who have directed the spirit of Yahweh or being his counselor have taught him? With whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed to him the way of understanding? He's letting you know, hey, Nope, there's nobody above the most high. Nobody gave him counsel. Nobody told him. He is um, omnipotent. Mm -hmm. All right? He's perpetual. He's he's the uh, beginning and the end. All right? So, uh, 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he takes up the owls as a very little thing. So, he's letting you know, hey, compared to us, we, they're nothing but dust. See what I'm saying? A drop of a bucket. They're, they're dust. They, they count for nothing. 16. And Lebanon is none, uh, not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. 
17, all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. They are nothing. That's why he's letting you know, even the children of Israel. So when people walk around with so much pride and stuff like that, that's why when they got in trouble, they put dust upon their head because that's what they are. They're dust. You have They have to remind themselves, hey, we ain't, you know, we didn't, uh, we didn't create this world. We, we was created to do this. And we think we all this and that. Hey, we gotta we gotta humble ourselves. You gotta that's why they always put dust and put on sackcloth because they gotta understand they're like dust. They were brought up from dust and they're gonna ret return to dust. That's why they had to be humble. That's where the word uh humble comes from, humility. So that's what he's talking about. Uh but go ahead and continue, man. I just want to throw that part in. No, nah, you good, bro. They needed that. They needed that. But just like brother Dan, just like brother Darren was talk, talking about, and that's just uh, piggybacking off of Second uh, Ezra six fifty six. But just like he's saying, he's saying the mo the other nations are compared to nothing because that's not that's not the importance of that's not the importance of the story. The importance of the story is about the Most High and His people. That's that's really the basis of the Bible, and a lot of people don't even understand that concept. But uh, I'm gonna jump to Amos three one through two. And hear this word, hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Yisraelah, against the whole family which I have brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known all your families of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. So again, a lot of people, a lot of people might not understand this, or a lot of people they might have a confusion. Because I, I run into a lot of brothers, they'll be like, Well, they'll say this, they'll be like, Well, if the most if the most high loved this. Why is he letting us go through all this? Well, it's just like your parents. You know, your parents love you, but sometimes they let you get burnt. Sometimes they let you get hurt because that's the only way you're going to learn. And yeah. that's what the Most High is doing. Like, he's he, uh, he seen it. Mm -hmm. He chastised us. And you got to understand, like, he already did it the nice way. He already tried to be like, hey, don't do that. He already he already came to you. So now he got to ratchet it up. You got to keep ratcheting it up, ratchet it up until everybody gets shot, you know. When, you're, when you don't listen to your parents say something and it finally gets to the point, they pop you real quick, then that's when you, you know, that's when you finally understand. That's that same thing that he's doing. That's why he said, I will punish you only for your sins, because he's only looking at us. That's why we're in the predicament, because we fell off. So a lot of people, we out here pointing the blame at Esau, Edom, and all these other nations. No, nah, it ain't about that. It's about us. And a lot of people get that confused. They out here got this hate for all these other nations. No, most high got the hate for everybody. He got enough hate for everybody. So leave that alone. We need to be worried about what we got to do. That's that's the importance. He gonna get them, man. Don't worry about what they got coming, cause they got some shit coming that you ain't got it. You ain't got worried about. Believe me, the most I got it. Trust. Me. So I'm jump to John four and twenty two. You worship me, you know not. <clears throat> we know what we worship for salvation of the Jew. So basically, and that, and and I tie this to a lot of things because you know you'll just like Brother Darren say you'll have people fall out and they'll pray on the knees, they'll pray about the school and hope that the coronavirus gets better to help pray, and they'll hope that uh, they'll have a, a a president that 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 can help them out, or they'll pray for a safe passage while they're eating some pork or something. You know, they, it's just, they're all lost, bro. They're all lost, and they, when they pray, they pray in vain because the Most High's not listening because they they they're praying for wickedness, they're praying in wickedness. So he's not even paying attention. He's like, get out of here. I'm like, no. Proverbs and that's what, that's, mm -hmm. and that's what he's talking about. You worship because you you know you don't know what we worship for. You don't know why we do the Sabbath. You don't know why we why we can go through the trials that we do. Because we trying we trying to get that we trying to get that reward at the end. The salvation. Salvation of the Jews because they're the only one that needs saving. And I and I repeat this because the Hebrew Israelites are the only people on earth that need saving. Because you got to understand when you really in this truth and you living it, you really trying to live it, going outside, dealing with these worldly folks is hell on earth to you. And and if you really in this truth and you and if you love the most high, you ready to go just like I am, man. Like you ready. You've been ready for this stuff. Man. It's getting old again, tired and it's getting repetitive. And that's how it is for us, man. That's why he says salvation only the Jews because we're ready to go. Everybody else wants us to get better and they want it to continue. We're ready for it to end. That's what we're praying for. And I'll let Brother Darren uh, take it over from there. Acts. <clears throat> oh, all right. Bet. I'm tripping. I was over there in uh, Deuteronomy. I was about to read that. Oh, 
Hey, there's so many of his scriptures we can get it is, bro. I try oh, to but it. I got a whole, I got a whole nother slide. I'm like, I'm trying hey, to see how the yeah. time do. <laughs> All right, but so <laughs> this is another evidence you can use, right? So you got Acts 13, 24 through 26. And by, you know, by means, you know, I don't, I don't condone people to go out here and just uh, read scripture and build it up just to go out here and argue with folks. Nah, that's not how that works. You yeah. know, it's, it's for you for, you know, because wisdom and knowledge is going to be a stability of times during Jacob's trouble. So you're going to need it. Exactly. That's, and this is, you know, for your personal ed edification, you know, when you run into a brother and, you know, when I first started in truth, there were some things, you know, I knew it for myself, but. This is where you get the edification so you can go and teach the other brothers. So that same understanding you got, you can give it to them. That's why we give these verses out and break it down like this so you can do the same thing with your brothers and bring them into the flock. That's that's all we do this for, man, is to build us up. We ain't trying to go out there and preach this to Esau because he don't care. Look at team. So this Acts 13, verses 24 through 26. And it says, when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. To who? The people of Israel. 25. And he's, he's not talking about the place. Because this is when they're in uh, Antios. You know, they're not in, they're not in, uh, I mean, they're not, they're, in, they're, they're not in Jerusalem, you know. Yeah, they're not in Jerusalem. Israel's people before, it's, before the it's a place, right? So 25. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold. There cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose. So he's talking about the Hamashiach. 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham. What? The stock of Abraham. And whosoever among you fear Yahweh to you is the word of this salvation sent. So he's talking about the children of uh, Israel. Just like he said, the people of Israel, the stock of Abraham. He made it, he specified it, right? So you got to understand, like when, when we out here teaching this truth that people are sitting on the highways and byways, we're teaching to Gentiles because we don't know who we're going to reach. So we just say, hey, man, you know, come get this word. You know, hey. So that's what he's talking about. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's telling you, hey, you know, if you fear the most high, hey, you might want to listen to these words because a lot of people say, you know, oh, you know, I, I believe it. You know, I believe in the most high and things like that. But when you tell them, hey, you know, are you going to stop know, being poor? You, you, know, you, know. uh, you know, the most high, you know, he knows my heart <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> and it's like, bro, like, what are you talking about? Like, I, I get that, but he also told you to be doers of the word. You know what I'm saying? So that's why he's like, like, uh, Mark seven seven. He says, "How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctors the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandment of Yahweh, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do." So you're not, you're not listening to him. So people, you, you got people that's Christians. Christianity was started by man. It started by the Greeks at that on top of that. Like, it comes from Catholic. Just like yep. he was telling the word. Emperor Constantine. Um, exactly. Just like he talking about the word, the word world was, cos you know, cosmos. Well, the word Catholic, it comes from, uh, it comes from the Greek word Catholicus, if I am right. And yeah, it means right. universal. Catholicus. Yeah, so it's, it's universal. This word isn't universal. It's for the children of Israel. This, this is what he used. He's giving you this to navigate through life. You see what I'm saying? And just so, a side note, the cat the, the Roman Catholic Church was built and set up to bring in the New World Order. That's why it's called Universal, because it's to bring the New World Order. This was this this is a little fun fact. All right. So I'm gonna jump to Deuteronomy real quick. And I'm gonna read about two of them out of there and then I mean hey, we got anything else to say, I ain't Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cap it off. I'm cap it off, but we don't we don't hit oh, we don't hit it heavy. I get I'll give you seven, you know, seven and nine. Know therefore that Yahweh thy power, he is Yahweh, that the faithful power, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Mm. So, hey, I can go back and forth, man, like 11. All right, Deuteronomy 11, uh, verse 1. Therefore thou shalt love Yahweh thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. Like, hey, but I'm going to jump to... Uh, like I was saying, 28, 28 and 1, you know, people want to understand, you know, the recite is the blessings for obedience. And it says, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that Yahweh thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. If we do what? If we follow those laws, statutes, and holidays, he's going to make you on top of that. Matter of fact, uh, 
Yeah, so I'm gonna jump to ten real quick. And you can read through the, you know, the command, uh, the the curses and the blessings. So this Deuteronomy ten and fifteen it says, "Only Yahweh had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and He chose their seed after them, even you, above all people, as it is this day." So He's talking about who the children of Israel, just like we can give. Uh, uh, I got one more. Uh, Psalms one forty seven nineteen and twenty he says he. any nation and as for his judgments they have not known them praise ye Yahweh so he's letting you know hey he only deal with the children of Israel it doesn't matter if they say oh Baruch the Baruch you know son of Beri or whatever he's still dwelling with those the children of Israel that he's family. not going exactly he's not going to take nobody randomly and be like hey here you go boom this is where uh, I'm, I took this person from the Moabites he's going to teach you no that that doesn't even that doesn't even make sense. It's not for everybody, bro. And I know everybody's not gonna catch that, but you know I'm gonna let uh brother Paris close it out for us. All right, and I, I got a couple more. I'm gonna start with Psalms, one thirty five and four. For Yahweh power has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel as a peculiar treasure, a peculiar treasure. Now, I'm gonna pull some more out. Before I end it off, because I, I hope by now people are getting getting what we're trying we're getting what we're trying to say and what we're trying to bring out that John three sixteen by bringing out these precepts, what people have been telling you that's not true. It's, it's just not. Oh yeah, hey, give them more ammo, man. No, oh, I, I am, I am, I am. All right, so uh, James one and one, uh, James, a servant of Yahweh. And of the Lord, and of the Lord, Yahweh Shah, Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, counting all joy when you all fall, diverse temptation. So basically, you got to get an understanding that James, he was a servant of Yahweh. He was also a servant of Yahweh Shah. And just like Brother Darren was talking about, they were scattered among the nations. But James was a servant of the Most High. And again, you got to understand that like when he was sending them out to the nation, they were scattered. You got to understand they were still by race and by blood and by culture, they were still Hebrew. That's just like if um, somebody that's, that practices in Mandarin Chinese and they're from China. If they move into America, they're still Chinese practicing Mandarin China because that's the culture. It's their race. That doesn't change. You know what I'm saying? That's the same thing. Just because you move from one country, that doesn't change. And that's the concept that you, that's the concept I want people to get from that. Just because the most high, just because he uses the word Gentiles, you got to understand that in the, if you go and Google this word Gentiles up, there's more than one type of Gentile. There's a Gentile that's an actual Gentile of the other nations, but there's a Gentile that's a gen, that's a Gentile that's an actual Hebrew Israelite, but he's acting and, and acting, pretending like the other Gentiles, trying to be like them, trying to copy their culture. He's acting lawless because he's not talking... On you're not learning under the law or follow the law. That's why it says Romans 7 and 1. I talk to them that know the law. Uh, uh, hey, what's that with, uh, I got one more. Revelations 5 and 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy of Salakim. Thou art worthy to take a book and to open themselves therefore. Thou hast wished slain. Thou hast redeemed us to Yahweh. By thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, so that redeem us, us is pertaining to the it's talk, pertaining to the Hebrew Israelites. By the blood, the blood of what that makes us all kinsmen by the flesh that we got earlier. That's that's what he's talking about. That's that's the family. That's just like if that's just like let's let's say it like this: if I come in somebody's house and they have a family book, you know, a family reunion book with their history and their culture. And I pick that book up and I start reading. I try to apply that to my life. It's not going to work because that's not my family book. I can't say, hey, look at my auntie. She did this and that. They're going to open a book up and be like, bro, you don't look like these people. This ain't your family. Why are you Why are you over here talking about a family that you ain't from? That's how everybody else looks when they bring out this Bible, man. For hey, real. Uh, like, you, you don't went to somebody's house, took their family book, and now you're trying to pertain it as yours. You hey. look crazy. You look crazy. The Muhammad hey. and you like, what are you doing? <laughs> you hey, look close like out bugged with, uh, out, bro. Close out with uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. All right. 
so people can understand. <laughs> Yep, 14 and 33. All right. Ooh. For Yahweh is not the author of confusion, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints. So when he's talking about churches, he's talking about the group of men when they're out here teaching I'm about, them. Yeah, I'm about, about to get it too. Don't don't get that twisted. He's talking about a building now. Yeah, he's talking, talking about a building, man. Or, that's the church. About, we already got that. that. That's church. When you're out here, prophet, when y'all are giving prophecy, and you're teaching the word, you know. What we doing right now? This is church. Yeah, we worship outside because you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. that's 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 more of like, uh, you know, bloodline gematria understanding. But we worship outside because of the the elements. Basically, they was that's how we got in touch with the Most High, and you know, we were the people of the earth. That's how that's why we got to follow these laws He gave us, just like the seven year Sabbath. How we're supposed to be moving around. Man, Esau Edom has named stuff after him and just like, hey, we're going to stay here. And they're just, just fucking up the land, bruh. Exactly. That's why he's showing them that, hey, Esau Edom, you're not fit to rule, bruh. That's why yeah. he, even though he created the world for the Israelites. Showing he's not fit to rule. Another thing, yeah. the Most High said in the Bible, do not move the landmarkers of thy forefathers. You surely be put to death. I mean, like, he tell you don't do stuff, and then you'd be surprised when certain stuff happens to you. Can't be surprised no more. But you got anything else you want to add? That's all, man. I, I think this has been a good edifying lesson. I want to thank all the Aqua Aqu Aqu that have been coming out listening and learning. You know, I want to give our honors and thanks to Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shah, Barak the Yahweh, Barak the Yahweh Shah, Barak the Yahweh, Barak the Yahweh Shah, Barak the Yahweh, Barak the Yahweh Shah. And I also want to give thanks to all the elders and the prophets that have been pushing this, pushing this truth. And to the four corners, and then I just want to thank y'all for uh, always supporting us, man. Keep watching the videos, and we coming out with more. Uh, this will be going live pretty soon. We'll be going on uh, YouTube pretty soon, so keep looking out for it. Shalom, Kwame Shalom.